Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Trinidad and Tobago's finance ministry to foot the bill for Caribbean Airlines severance to 450 employees. This story takes the lead in our 1139th edition of Caribbean Perspective for Thursday, 24th June 2021. Details after this break. Hubbard's big promotion is back. Live free for one year. Spend $50 or more in any Hubbard's department and receive a chance to win. Big prizes every month. Property or vehicle insurance for one year. Free internet, cable and data for one year. Free fuel for one year. Free cooking gas for one year. Free electricity for one year. Free drinks for one year. Extra cash account and the big free groceries for one year. Promotion runs from April 1st to September 30th, 2021. Live free for one year with Hubbard's in association with Sol Gas, Flo, Grenadian General Insurance, Cara Brewery, Coca-Cola, Grenada Bottling Company, Grenlec, Communal Cooperative Credit Union, Dutch Lady Milk, Promo, Danny and Supreme. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back. It's going to cost Caribbean Airlines over $100 million to retrench some 450 of its workers set to be separated from the state-owned carrier as part of the restructuring of its operations. TV6's Jewel Brown reports. Hey, I am saddened by all of this. This is not something that any of us, and I must say I am saddened by all of this. This is not something that any of us would have wanted to see. I'm advised that Caribbean Airlines is going to reduce its jet fleet to eight jet aircraft and its turboprop fleet to five ATRs. Finance Minister Colm Imbert in the Senate on Tuesday as he responded to urgent questions posed by lead of opposition business in the upper house Wade Mark about the announcement by state-owned Caribbean Airlines. On Monday, Caribbean Airlines said it recorded a loss of TT $172.7 million in the first quarter of 2021. The airline also said in 2020 it suffered operating losses of TT $738 million compared to operating profits for 2018 and 2019 and that it had determined that 25% of its workforce, or about 450 positions throughout its network, is surplus to its current needs. To the Honorable Minister of Finance, can the Minister indicate how the retrenchment and severance packages of the approximately 450 CAL workers who are earmarked for retrenchment will be Financed. Madam President, Caribbean Airlines does not have the required finances for the severance payments, and therefore the severance payments will be financed by the Ministry of Finance. The finance minister said Caribbean Airlines is now at the beginning of the consultation process regarding the proposed reduction in staff and is finalizing the exact number of personnel. Is the minister aware? whether the board has worked out the value as it relates to the amount that would be paid out if this figure holds of 450 workers or employees. Minister of Finance. Yes. The estimate given to the Ministry of Finance at this time, which is subject to finalization, is in the vicinity of $110 million. The finance minister said the state-owned airline is currently putting in place a number of support systems for affected employees. These would include counseling services for employees and their family through the Employee Assistance Program, outplacement services to be coordinated with external recruiting agencies and the Ministry of Labor, transition training with respect to care guide, career guidance and support and financial management, in addition to the compensation packages that the employees will be entitled to upon separation. 
The state-owned airline said since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic and the suspension of operations at its base in Trinidad and Tobago, it had seen passenger numbers plummet and flight numbers reduced to less than 10% of normal operations. Minister Imbert said Caribbean Airlines has advised that passenger demand on its routes is projected to decrease in the short and medium term and for the next year or so by the International Air Transport Association and the airline's consultants. Amadeus. It is expected that this fleet of eight jet aircraft and five ATRs, I'm advised that Caribbean Airlines has been advised by its consultants and by IATA that will be adequate to manage any passenger demand and therefore persons should be able to access flights on CALS routes in similar fashion than they do now. However, there will be fewer flights and fewer routes, but the demand will also be less. Minister Imbert also said he was advised that the airline's restructured fleet will service future demand and required levels of service to passengers. He also said air passenger traffic is expected to return to pre-COVID levels in or around 2023. Jewel Brown, TV6 News. Antigua and Barbuda's Commission of Police responds to Indian diamond mogul Mikhail Choksi's allegations that he was kidnapped from his Jolly Harbor home and taken to Dominica last month. A report was made by, on, behalf, on his behalf by his attorney. We have not had the opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one with him. So everything that we have gathered is through his attorney. We are investigating the complaint that was made in that document that came to us and we will continue to investigate that matter. Meantime, we'll also monitor what is happening with his matter in Dominica. Choksi was reported missing by a concerned family member on May 23rd. He has been denied bail in Dominica, where he is facing a charge of illegal entry. His attorneys are presently fighting his extradition to India, where he faces charges for his alleged role in the defrauding of Punjab National Bank. Indian officials want him to be deported directly to India from Dominica. <laughs> especially if there are strong winds. Rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. Police were called in to disperse participants of the latest Pan Sunday activities in the heart of Castries East this past weekend after someone allegedly lodged a complaint about the noise. Supporters of the opposition St. Lucia Labour Party have been hitting the streets every Sunday since the fifth anniversary of the previous election, requesting that the Prime Minister stick to convention and announce the next poll date. Joachim De Placey of HTS News Force reports. The constituency of Castries East was the venue of another installment of the anti allen Chastney led UWP Pan Sunday activity, a main opposition grassroots movement featuring silverware beaten campaigners demanding that the Prime Minister announce the date of the election. From the thin roadways and the footpaths on the hillside of New Jerusalem, Bacatel, a stream of supporters clad in red on foot and in a long convoy of vehicles descended the slopes into the capital of Castries, Marsha. Supporters with the leader of the opposition and Castries East MP in stride, strolled by the working class communities of Bishop's Gap, Arendelle Hill, Warrington 12, Black Malay, George Charles Boulevard and Tourouge. The jaunt along Marsha Road culminated at the grounds of the community's famed sports ground with the protesters' refrain punctuated by the now familiar pounding of cookware. However, as the long shadows of dusk gave way to the evening twilight, the activity was brought to a close with a police presence in the midst of calls by the parliamentary representative for compliance with authorities. The way we have to deal with them is in the ballot box. We're not arguing, we're not creating any problems. We've been very peaceful, just getting our ID cards. I don't want anybody to argue with any policeman. They can do whatever they want. 
they must call elections. And when they call elections, Shas Neymar, Shas Neymar, Shas Neymar, Shas Neymar, the Castries East MP urged the assemblage to disperse peacefully and await their turn at the ballot box. We are not going to break the law. We are not going to break the law. What we're going to do is we're going to vote. We're going to vote. So, let's sleep peacefully. And for one more time, let us say to Shastre, what I'm doing? Shastre must go! Shastre must go! The heavily armed police officers, some of whom received harsh criticism from the crowd for failing to adorn face masks in keeping with public health measures, waded through the throng of supporters to leave the area. An SLP Cashy's East representative claims the law enforcement was summoned following noise complaints. Joachim Duplacy, HDS News Force. The Guyana Elections Commission on Tuesday agreed to send the Chief Elections Officer Keith Lowenfield, his Deputy Roxanne Myers and Region 4 Returning Officer Clement Mingo on leave pending a decision on whether the Commission will debate and decide on a motion to dismiss them. Details in this News Source Guyana report with Gordon Mosley. The Guyana Elections Commission this afternoon agreed to send the Chief Elections Officer, Keith Lowenfield, his Deputy Roxanne Myers, and the Region 4 Returning Officer, Clermont Mingo, on leave, pending a decision on whether the Commission will debate and decide on a motion to dismiss them. The leave is annualized leave. During today's meeting of the Elections Commission, the APNU AFC nominated commissioners argued that since the motion really provides for a hearing to be conducted to decide on its contents, that hearing should not be conducted by persons who have made clear their bias in the matter. Commissioner Vincent Alexander. If people are having a hearing, then natural justice should prevail, and natural justice does not provide for people who are biased to be involved in a hearing. And that they are biased because they originated the charges and they have made public statements on how this matter should be concluded. Therefore, they are biased and should not be party to the hearing. Two weeks ago, the PP Civic Government nominated commissioners on the Elections Commission moved a motion calling for the dismissal of the three officials over allegations about their handling of various matters during last year's elections and their alleged involvement in fraud and misconduct in public office related to the same elections. Those matters are currently before the courts. Commissioner Alexander said it is clear that those who have already exhibited their views on the matter could not be expected to conduct a fair hearing in the same matter. The opposition nominated commissioners said the Elections Commission should await the outcome of the court matters before it even examines the motion calling for the officials to be dismissed. What we propose is that they couldn't be involved in the process of a hearing. We even said that the possibility is we could await the court and then put the court's decision into what we our process. Question about whether the statutes governing GCOM would allow for the setting up of a tribunal to look into the allegations in the motion and determine an outcome, Mr. Alexander said GCOM is governed by the laws of Guyana. And once you get to something called a hearing, it is the common law that steps in, and the common law is unequivocal about there being no bias in such a process. So while there be no statute to specify that, the GCOM is not alien to the common law, and therefore the common law in the circumstances, the one that regulates this question of natural justice, and a hearing, and should prevail. Meanwhile, PP Civic Government nominated commissioner says Gunaraj believes that a commission could deal with the motions that have been placed before it. The opposition has uh, suggested, advocated, whatever you want to call it, that uh, GCOM does not have the power to hear or or should not hear the motions against these three persons and that the tribunal should be set up. That, of course, was vehemently uh, objected to by the three government commissioners. Uh, subsequently, the chairman has, well, there was a lot of back and forth on it. The chairman has uh, deferred her ruling on it, but in the interregnum, uh, the Three persons are sent on Mr. Gunaraj said he's hoping a decision on how the matter will be dealt with is made soon and the commission can move on. I'm hoping that a date is set uh, in short order uh, for a decision or a ruling from the chairman and then the motions can be debated and determined. 
Did you know that your friends and family can now shop at the Food Fair from anywhere in the world and you can receive here in Grenada? The Food Fair and GrenadaMarket.com now makes it possible through secure online shopping and personalized customer service. Simply send your loved ones a list of your preferred items or let them fill an online basket and the items will be available for pickup or delivery. Visit GrenadaMarket.com or thefoodfair.gd today for more details. The new norm. Spread the news. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.